Hello dear students, this is the part 2 of transposons lecture series and in this lecture we will be discussing uh, transposons in eukaryotes and we will be fo focusing on ACDS elements in MEMIS. So transposable elements in eukaryotes uh, we will be discussing in this. Eukaryotic transposable elements are divided into two groups. One group is structurally similar to transposable elements in bacteria and ends with short inverted repeats and transposing as DNA. So examples are P elements in Drosophila, AC and DS elements in maize uh, of this. And for uh, we have already discussed the typical structure of transposon um, or IS elements in the first part of this transposon lecture series. The second point is the other group comprises retro transposons and these retro transposons they use RNA intermediates and are similar in structure and movement to retroviruses. Retro transposons are evolutionarily related to retroviruses. Retro transposons also generate direct repeats at the point of insertion like uh, a typical transposon or IS element. Examples are TY element in yeast which is not in your course, Scopia elements in Drosophila which are not which is not in your course and LO sequences in humans. Now transposable elements uh, in eukaryotes are of many kinds we have just discussed but we, we will be focusing and discussing in this detail AC and DS elements in maize which is a DNA transposable elements. So, maize transposable element were first of all identified in maize by Barbara McClintock and you can see the picture of Barbara McClintock here. This is considered one of the landmark discoveries of genetics and she was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for this discovery in 1983. And you can see here that uh, what is the caption which shows, which says variegation, variegated multicolored kernels in corn are caused by mobile genes. Uh, the study of variegated corn is led Barbara McClintock to discover transposable elements. So this, uh, these variegation pattern in maize kernels are because of transposable elements and this was discovered so, by Barbara maize transposable Barbara elements McClintock. were first identified by Barbara McClintock. Mostly when you see maize kernels, they are either wholly pigmented or colorless or yellow. But some kernels have spots or streaks of color on them. Like here in this picture, you can see the spots. Uh, here in this picture, you can see some are totally yellow and some are totally pigmented and some have streaks of yellow and um, other pigment. She explained this in terms of unstable mutation because of controlling elements which move from one place to other in genome and control the expression of genes. So you can refer peers for this. I have, uh, uh, I have understood it from peers. You can take any book of genetics but this PPT I have made from peers. Now McClintock discovered that cause of unstable mutation was a gene that moved. She noticed chromosome breakage often occurs in maize at a gene dissociation represented by DS but only in the presence of another gene activator represented by AC. Later it was found that AC and DC are transposons that have terminal inverted repeats and they generate flanking direct repeats at the point of insertion. Each as AC element contains gene for encoding transposase enzyme. So ele AC elements are autonomous for transposing and DS elements do not have transposase in gene due to some deletion. So DS elements are non-autonomous because they cannot transposase transpose on their own. But DS elements can transpose in the presence of AC elements because they still possess terminal repeats recognized by AC transposase. 
So we will understand it through photographs and flow charts. Here you can see this flow chart or the photograph is taken from Pierce. Here you can see that this is a typical transposon and this transposon has a transposase gene in the center and inverted it is flanked by inverted repeats which are represented by dark green and opposite arrows and then these uh, your um, uh, these purple ones these are your direct repeats, repeats which are generated in uh, host so now here you can see these are some of uh, the elements ds different ds elements they which they have shown here ds9 ds2 uh, d1 ds2 d2 ds6 so different ds elements have different deletions now a kernel with cc genotype say there is a kernel uh, or a seed with small c's homozygous cc geno recessive genotype will be colorless yellow or white while kernel with genotype capital c capital c or capital c small c it is heterozygous will be purple due to production of pigment now ds element transposing under the influence of ac element may insert into capital c allele destroying its ability to produce pigment uh, the ds element can can jump back to new location or original location this restores the function of gene responsible for the pigment production the pigmented sector or the streaks depends on early jumping late jumping of ds elements early jumping uh, back will be resulting in early restoration and larger sector of purple late excision or jumping will result in small pigmented sector so here there are two pictures this is showing variegation in uh, seeds kernel of um, uh, maize and here you can see a uh, flower uh, which is a rose flower so this is showing variegation pattern also because of transposable elements so we will understand ACDS elements through photographs. Now here this, uh, this photograph is from Pierce. So here in A, you can see that they are showing the DS, ACDS elements. So this is a homozygous recessive plant with small c and small c. And because of this, cells with genotypes small c, small c produces no pigment resulting in the colorless or white uh, or yellow kernel so you, this is the homozygous recessive small c small c producing no pigment now the genotype with capital c and small c uh, this is this is the case where there is no transposition no jumping this is cells with genotype cc produces pigment why because the capital c is responsible for the formation of the pigment so it is resulting in a pigmented permal color so this is normal now c is the case when the genotype is heterozygous capital c small c but here the transposition has taken place so in this case an ac element produces a transposase now we have just read from the text that ac element uh, can make transposase and ds element cannot make transposase but this ds element uh, depends on AC uh, for the formation of uh, transposase so that it can jump to the other genes. So here you can see that an AC element produces transposase uh, uh, which stimulates transposition of the DS element into uh, the gene or the capital C allele. Because of this jumping now what happens that this will not uh, make any protein and so this will be silent and so this portion will not any uh, form uh, pigment and so this will be colorless or yellow so what uh, this an ac element produces transposase which stimulates further transposition of the ds element in some cells so here in d genotype cc mosaic transposition during uh, development because of the jumping of ds element into the pigment producing gene now here 
you can see because of this jumping what has happened that this yellow portion has formed which is your colorless so here you can uh, you will see that this will disrupt its pigment producing function and so it results how uh, the resulting cells have geno have with genotype cc are colorless and here you can see that this has jumped back again so this will restore the uh, pigment producing function of this gene so as the ds transposes it leaves the cells restoring the alleles function a cell in which ds has transposed out uh, of the c allele will produce pigment generating spots of color in otherwise colorless journal kernel so what we what is the difference between c and d here in c the transposition has taken place in the capital c gene so the the allele or the gene is unable to form any pigment that is why it is yellow in color and in d it has jumped back again from this c allele so it restores and so uh, this will be a showing pigmented pattern because it will be jumping on and off on and off so this is how we explained ac ds element in maze and this is how it was explained by barbara mcclintock and the same thing is explained in Clug and Cummings. So you can see here, this is DS and this is W. Now this DS is under control of AC. So when DS transposes this, this gene W, which uh, when this is DS insertional metagenesis happens, and so it cannot make any pigment. And now when it moves out, it can again make pigment. So this is how they have explained it and you can refer to any book for understanding this so what are what is the caption consequences of the influence of activator ac element on dissociation element uh, so uh, ds is transposed to a region adjacent to a theoretical gene w subsequent chromosomal breakage is uh, introduced the w bearing segment is lost and a mutant gene expression occurs in c uh, ds is transposed to a region within the w gene causing immediate mutant expression ds may also jump out of the w gene with uh, accompanying restoration of w gene activity and its wild type expression so these are same you can um, read it from peers or from clark and cummings or any other source which you uh, find so these are some this is the last example we will be doing for transposon in eukaryotes today so this is not a cds element but you can see that uh, in p you you sometimes you find wrinkle peas and so this is also because of the transposon why the wrinkle trait in garden peas studied by uh, mendel is caused by insertion of a transposable element into to the structural gene for starch branching enzyme both wrinkled and smooth seeds can develop in the same pods. So this wrinkled seeds uh, in the pod is because of the jumping of the transposon in starch branching, starch branching enzyme. So I hope uh, these examples are enough for understanding transposons in eukaryotes. And we will be meeting in part 3 lecture of transposons. Thank you students.